this is Lori, also known as Inspired to Act, and today is all about sharing my shame, inspired by Steve Pavlina and also by Bunny Berry, um, who is doing Peas on Earth. It's a 40-day raw food mini challenge, and instead of Peas on Earth, I decided to call this Peas with my past making peace with where I've come from to get where I am today and all of the little things that I would be terrified if people knew in person or people knew some of these things about my past. Now, I have to say I'm not necessarily terrified when I tell people one on one, but the whole idea of sharing it on the internet with people I really don't even know has a whole other element to it because I don't have any rapport with you and I don't know what you think is appropriate or inappropriate and sometimes I would censor my conversations based on the comfortability of the other person. So without knowing anybody or anything that's going on, I'm just going to share some of the things that would totally freak me out if it was like slandered all over the internet. I just would hate to think that it was out there. And you know what? coming to peace with that, moving forward from that, growing from those experiences, because I actually grew a ton from all of these experiences. I learned a lot about who and what I am. So instead of just tell you all the, the good stuff, I'll just tell you the juicy, nitty-gritty stuff. So I am far from perfect, let me just tell you that. And if anybody, I don't think anybody ever thought that, but I hope you don't think that I ever thought that in any of my videos. So... I had to write them down because there's so many. <laughs> oh, am I ready for this? I don't know. <sighs> okay. One of the things that used to freak me out or made me uncomfortable to talk about was I grew up very poor and I grew up with a very verbally and physically abusive father. Um, that was really hard for me to talk about in relationships. I didn't even tell the man that I was with what I had undergone because I was just so humiliated by it and I didn't want anybody to take pity on me. That's the last thing I wanted. So I felt that I had better things to talk about so rather than share the negative stories of my childhood, I just decided to skip all of that and talk about the good things that had happened. But those things really do exist. Those things really did happen. Um, I was beaten so badly that I would have welts and bruises on my arms and legs and the school principal would call me and my siblings into the principal's office and ask us where they came from and of course we were terrified we don't want to tell our them that our father beats us and that you know he would go to jail we were terrified from that and I was humiliated by that and I kept that within me for a very long time and I'm even getting emotional now just talking about it because I don't have a close relationship with my father, um, and I know that he only did what he knew was best. He felt that his discipline was appropriate, and I truly don't feel that he thought that he was doing anything overboard. Do you know what I mean? I truly have to forgive my parents, and I do forgive them. I think that they did the best they knew how. It, you know, you kind of do what you've been taught. So, that's part of the past, but it used to bother me, and also the fact that we grew up really poor. There's eight kids in my family, and um, there's just no way. My father wasn't able to hold down a job, and my mother didn't work, and because of that, we didn't have anything, you know, and I was the hand-me-down kid. I took whatever was left over, and yeah, Christmas and birthdays were the best thing because that meant I got gifts, but other than that, we really didn't have very much, and that used to bother me. I used to think that I was less of a person because of that. I know now that it had nothing and it only strengthened my character, but for a long time that really bothered me. Another thing that is like a skeleton in my closet is that I shoplifted and I actually had a criminal record because of it. Um, I went to jail because of it and it became such a chronic habit and problem of mine that, um, you know, that's what happened. I, I, I mean, I was such a brat about it and had such an attitude and such an arrogance because I was just doing it like, yeah, I could do whatever I want, you know, typical teenager attitude. But this time I was 18, so any legal ramifications came upon me. So that was very embarrassing. As a matter of fact, the day that that happened, my 
distant, not really boyfriend, but somewhat of a boyfriend, a man that I w had been friends with for a long time. We considered starting a romantic relationship, and he had been overseas in Japan in the military, and the day he came to see me and drove up from San Diego, um, Carl or Carlsbad, wherever, P Camp Pendleton, he drove up to see me. I was in jail. I wasn't even there. And here, when he had left, I was this, you know, rather innocent girl, worked at a Hallmark store, was still a virgin, and he comes back, and here I am, a troublemaking, promiscuous girl that's in jail. Drama. Totally embarrassing. And for a long time, again, how, do you really want to talk about that with people? I didn't, I didn't want to talk about it. So, another skeleton in my closet. Um, I got a lot of stories. Um... Other things that bother me or that I'm embarrassed, or some of the things, is that I was unfaithful in my romantic relationships. Now, not all of my relationships, but some of them I did, and I found myself, um, how would I say, either I would get with a man so quick, and because I was so needy, that I didn't really know how to even handle a relationship. Either I wasn't mature enough to handle it, or I just kind of was clingy and grabbed to whatever I wanted and then when I found myself in the relationship and I outgrew that place in my life, um, I didn't move on to the next move on to the next person. I didn't break up all the time right then. I would find a new boyfriend and then break up with the man that I was seeing or the boy that I was seeing or the guy. And um kind of got a bad reputation for that. That was tough. And to make matters worse, I had my son when I was 19 years old and n not married and had this shoplifting record. Shortly after that, um, I became an exotic dancer to support myself and my son. I didn't want to put my kid in daycare all the time and it was only three nights a week and it was a way that I could provide without being dependent on anybody else. And my family freaked. I think everybody freaked. They probably thought, oh my gosh, what the hell's going on with Lori, you know? So that was a skeleton in my closet. I danced for two years um, in Southern California, in North Hollywood, you know, deja vu. Um, let's see, what are my other skeletons in the closet? So those are pretty much the biggies that would just totally terrify me. Oh my gosh, I could just see it now, you know? everybody knew, but you know what, that is me, this is where I've come from, I'm not trying to act like I'm anybody, any better than anybody else, or that my, I have this perfect past, those difficult things that I went through made me who and what I am today, and make me want to be a better person, you know, having children, gosh, I, I don't know what more of a motivation you need to want to be the best you could, you could be, and I'm getting all emotional because being a mother is something that, oh, is something I didn't realize I was undertaking when I had my children. So, ah, uh, you don't want to see this. But these things that happened to me, or the, the choices that I made, the fact that I didn't graduate with a college degree and that I don't have a PhD and I didn't go to the best schools and I didn't grow up with a lot of money or, you know, I have a criminal record or some of the stupid things that I went through really weren't stupid because that gave me the contrast to where I'm going next. And, and those were the ways that I learned how we're all getting to the same place in the end, you know. We have our own individual experiences, and who's to say one's better than the other, but that's me sharing my shame with you. So I don't let that burden me down. As a matter of fact, usually I feel great about it, because when I share it with one-on-one, -on -one, they see where I'm going, they know where I'm headed. I know where I'm going and what I want in my life. And those are the things that just built me up to get to this place. But for those of you who don't know me, and if this totally freaks you out, then unsubscribe to my blogs or my videos and, you know, I'm sorry, you know. I can't, actually, I can't even apologize for it because this is just who and what I am, so... It's, I guess, being more tolerant and accepting of people and, and realizing we are who we are, and these are the things that made us who we are, who we are today. So...
that's what it is. So, anyway, that was inspired by making peace with my past and by Steve Publina. So, thank you guys for watching, and more to come soon. Bye.